<laughs> Hello pandas and other scrap enthusiasts. What is the most expensive part of a car? It depends on how you look at it. Uh, to a typical car owner, it's probably the maintenance. To a mechanic, maybe the labor. Uh, to a manufacturer, the design or development process. To a dealership, they might say the shipping costs. And to a collector, maybe the branding or the reputation. But to a recycler, there's one small component that can be worth more than the entire rest of the car combined. The catalytic converter. This canister-shaped exhaust component is required on all passenger vehicles in order to meet modern emission standards. But why are catalytic converters so valuable? Why are some of them less expensive than others when scrapped? And how do recyclers know what price they should buy or sell them for? Well, the answer to all of these questions comes down to the precious metal content with which they're made. Precious metals are any metal with a high economic value, but catalytic converters contain some combination of three platinum group metals, platinum, palladium, and rhodium. These PGMs are some of the most valuable metals in the world, more valuable than gold, and they're necessary for vehicle exhaust systems for two main reasons. First, they act as catalysts. They cause reactions that chemically alter the exhaust gases while remaining unchanged themselves. Without PGMs, your engine emits nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons, toxic gases. Platinum and rhodium draw nitrogen out of these oxides and allow free nitrogen and oxygen molecules to form nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. And palladium and platinum oxidize carbon monoxides and hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and water vapor. Secondly, these PGMs are noble metals and are extremely resistant to acids, oxidization, and corrosion, and can withstand very high temperatures. This is important not only because the high heat makes these reactions more efficient, but because the combustion of gasoline in a small metal box tends to be fairly hot. These PGMs are the only metals that function this way under these conditions. Some PGMs are used in the manufacturing of chemicals, jewelry, electronics, and other industries, but 60% of all PGMs are used for the manufacturing of autocatalyst. And it is much, much easier to refine palladium, platinum, and rhodium from recycled converters than it is to produce new material. For example, it takes up to 12 tons of mined ore to refine a single troy ounce of platinum. And rhodium is a rare metal, mainly produced as a byproduct of mining platinum, palladium, or nickel. Thanks, nerd thub. Recycling catalytic converters, though? Well, the data on that is a little outside of my expertise, so I went to today's video sponsor to find out more. PMR is an industry-leading catalytic converter processor located in Canada. They use assay analysis to determine the true precious metal content in all kinds of converters, adding to their growing database so everybody can access the true value of their material. I met with Ryan, Director of Corporate Accounts, to try and find out why these catalytic converters are so valuable, starting with why these metals are so expensive. So mining uh, PGMs is labor and energy intensive, not to mention very expensive. Uh, mines are coal powered, transportation is fuel powered, and mines need to be operated by trained and, and paid staff. So essentially, mining rhodium is really hard. It's also rare. It's kind of like scorpion venom. It doesn't matter how much you want if you can only ever get small amounts at a time. Platinum, on the other hand, is moving into a deficit in 2023, so prices will rise, versus uh, in 2015 when there was an oversupply, um, they were much lower. Okay, so the prices fluctuate frequently depending on supply and demand and other factors, like a, a global panini. They're all going in different directions, even at different times, but primarily since COVID hit, uh, 2020 prices have really skyrocketed and um, if you look at like platinum for example um, you know ranges looking from like 700 to a thousand dollars an ounce um, which is, is pretty low compared to the others right. you've got palladium which is the most important metal it makes up the, the biggest um, piece of the pie let's say of an average converter that really jumped from uh, low thousand dollars an ounce up to three thousand dollars an ounce within the year now, rhodium is a weird one that I was super curious about after seeing its price explode and then come back down to earth. And Ryan explained to me that rhodium's a funny one to keep an eye on because it doesn't trade very often, because it's only really used in catalytic converters. 
Even that use is relatively new, as older converters mainly used platinum, and heavy use of rhodium is a result of more modern designs. I was also curious about his take on why some converters can be basically worthless. Well, there's different factors. It's usually because it's like an aftermarket. I wouldn't call an aftermarket worthless because, you know, you can still have like 20, 30, 40 dollars a piece depending on where it's from. Right. Um, but really like aftermarkets uh, are like 90% worth less than OEMs um, just because they're loaded with 90% less precious metals. By the way, just in case you didn't know, OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer, which means the parts were made by the same company that made the vehicle. Aftermarket parts are typically made to be more affordable replacements and often designed to be compatible with as many different vehicles as possible. But you'll also have uh, what we call like reject converters. So let's just say from the car manufacturers, you're gonna have a reject converter that there was something wrong throughout the production of it. So you have, let's say, inside the ceramic brick, right? And it gets coated with precious metals. That's what makes it valuable. But if there was yeah. a reject in it, maybe that wasn't coated properly, so it still gets made, it goes into the market, but it looks like a converter, it's usually like white or yellow. Um, but if we actually assay it, there's no precious metals because it hasn't been like coated with it. Well, that sounds like a massive oversight. So we see it all the time, and, it, and what's really difficult with it um, for our suppliers, because they're trying to buy these pieces, which is very uh, risky. So we see the two extremes. We see this unit having no value whatsoever, so like zero across the board, and then we see this having super high loadings. Because what's happening is, if those convert, let's say something else was rejected on the production line, maybe not the converter, but the car, that converter is still good, but they still need us to um, dispose of that converter. So you're going to have a brand new looking converter, silver, you know, shiny, but it has crazy amounts of, of loadings because it hasn't been run for 10, 15 years. So when our clients, uh, you know, try to buy it, it's like I, I, I tell them you really can't because until we test it, you're going to have two extremes. You're going to have the zero, no value, and it's going to look exactly like the $400, $300 one that actually is good. Now that point surprised me, and I'd never considered uncoated or even double glazed converters even being possible. Realistically, that's not something you or I are likely to ever encounter. That's more something for individuals who have a direct relationship with the manufacturers. Something that will affect everybody though, is that the global demand for PGMs seems to be on the rise. As the world makes a giant leap to carbon neutrality and air quality control, the demand for platinum group metals will only rise. You know, tightening emission laws, uh, very important, uh, hide the hydrogen economy and recovering sales, car sales um, only means that our metals will be in demand and prices will eventually go up. So eventually, you know, that, like say maybe end of this year, 2024, when the car, like when you see the car manufacturers really start pumping out new cars like they were pre-COVID, prices will only go up because rhodium is tied to new production. So, catalytic converters are made with rare and valuable materials which cost more every year and cannot be substituted. While electric vehicles don't need catalytic converters, the electrification of the auto industry is a slow process and hydrogen, hybrid and traditional vehicles are an industry that will continue to grow, so demand for PGMs will continue to grow as well. Hydrogen vehicles and especially exciting auto technology, use a clean fuel that only produce water vapor when burned. Platinum is the key catalyst in these systems, and although still in development, the future of platinum in hydrogen vehicles mean this PGM will remain in demand for many years. Clearly, there's a lot that goes into understanding what each specific converter is worth, and we'll take a closer look at that, as well as the importance of recycling them in another video. I'm excited to dig a little deeper into this industry, so click the like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, leave it better than you found it, and keep doing the thing.